Hello po sa lahat. Welcome po sa channel natin where I'll teach you the common lessons for IT courses dito sa Pilipinas. Ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon is about database. Since this playlist is all about MySQL, dapat alam din natin ang mga principles and terms behind this. Una sa lahat, ano po ba yung tinatawag natin na database? When you say database, this is just an organized collection of data for faster insertion, retrieval, update, and deletion. Dati, pag nagsisave ng data, all we can think of is paper, folders, and organizers. Pag may kailangan na information, we scan through these documents, which we all know takes a lot of time and effort. Sa ngayon, may mga offices and institutions pa rin na may paper-based data, but for backup purposes na lang nila. So, to eliminate such efforts on managing data, nagkaroon tayo ng database. Kahit saan may database, meron sa mga mobile apps, maybe to store location or pick up points gaya ng Uber and Grab, or mobile games to store your level and scores. Shopping sites like Lazada or Shopee also use database para sa list ng products nila and its prices. Another example is LVC website kung saan pwede kang mag-track ng shipment mo using the transaction number. Best example sa usage ng database ay yung mga airline companies like PAL or Cebu Pacific. Dito, pwede kang mag-book online ng flights and pwede ka rin mag-check-in online. Ngayon, alam na natin ano ang gamit ng database. Pag-usapan naman natin paano natin mamamanage yung data natin. When you say manage, ito yung kung paano tayo mag-save, mag-edit, mag-retrieve, or delete ng data. Dito na papasok si SQL, or some authors say it SQL, or Standard Query Language. This is the language used to manage data. Itong nakikita nyo is an example of SQL syntax. Iba't ibang DBMS or software, iba't iba din yung syntax na accepted. For example, sa MySQL, gumagamit ng double quote to concatenate or magdugtong ng string of characters. Pero sa MS Access naman, it uses brackets. So I've mentioned earlier about DBMS. This means Database Management System. Ito yung mga software na pwede mong gamitin para ma-manage mo yung data mo. Ito yung ilan sa mga example ng DBMS na pwede mong gamitin. So, iba't ibang company, iba't ibang software din ang ino-offer nila. Pero sa lesson natin, we will use MySQL from XAMP or SAMP. In the next lesson, I will show you how to download and install SAMP. Hello po sa lahat. Welcome po sa channel natin where I'll teach you common lessons for IT courses dito sa Pilipinas. Ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon is how to download and install XAMP or SAMP. So let's start. Open up Google Chrome or kahit anong browser meron kayo. Then type XAMP, XAMPP, then download. Tapos, click on this link here. If you're using Linux or Mac, download the appropriate installer. Since Windows ang gamit ko, I will click on the button here. It's now downloading, so let's wait for it to finish. Once done, locate nyo yung installer, and then double-click on it. Then, click on the OK button, and then now, click on Next. Here, you can uncheck some components since we just need... MySQL and Apache, but I'll just click on the next button. Now, since my SAMP na ako na naka-install dito sa drive C ko, I will install this sa ibang drive. So, I will click on this button and create a folder in my drive E. Pero sa inyo, if this is your first time na mag-install, just click on the next button. Kasi ang default location is your drive C. I will uncheck this option. And then click on the next button. Then wait for the installation to finish. 
Once done, click on the finish button. Then for the language, default is US. So just click on the save button. Every time gagamit kayo ng MySQL, you need this control panel. So once done, open any browser and then type localhost, then press enter key. Now this is your dashboard. Click on the PHP My Admin menu. So that's how simply it is to install the software. For our next topic, we will create our own database. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more SQL topics. Have a good day. Hello po sa lahat. Welcome po sa third lesson natin where you will learn the common terminologies and how to create database. So these are the common terms in database. When you say tables, ito yung structure kung saan magsisave ng data. As we all know, tables are consist of columns and rows. Sa SQL terms, columns are also called fields, while rows are records. The second term is fields or columns. This refers to a specific type of data type like name, address, phone number, and more. Third one is queries. Ito yung tanong mo sa database. For example, gusto mo ma-retrieve ang data ng clients na nakatira sa tagig lang or clients na globe users lang or kung ano-ano pang scenario. The last one is result set. Ito naman yung result na binibigay ng database sa tanong or query mo. Sa next na mga topics natin, magiging clear to mga terms na to kapag nakagawa na tayo ng sarili nating database. Again, database is composed of tables, which are composed of rows and columns, which is consist of data or information. Ngayon, let's create our own database. So first, kailangan natin start ang Apache and MySQL. So open up your control panel, go to the sub folder in your drive C, but in my case, nasa drive E or kung saan nyo na-install yung SAMP nyo from the previous video or lesson natin. Then look for the SAMP control. Pag nahanap nyo na, right-click on it, then choose Pin to Taskbar. So every time na gagamitin nyo yung SAMP, you just have to click it here. Then, click on the Start button for Apache and MySQL. Since na-start na natin, open up your Chrome or any browser and then type localhost. Then click on the PHP My Admin menu. As you can see, these are the list of default databases in our server or computer. To create our own database, click on this new button here. Tapos, type in grocery underscore db. That's our database name. And then click on the create button. So now, since my database na tayo, it's time to add tables. Type in the table name, category, with two columns, and then click on the Go button. This part here, kung in case gusto mong dagdaga ng columns or fields na table mo. Pwede ka mag-add, specify the number of columns you want to add, and then click on the Go button. Now, type category ID, and category as the column names. Then, baka magtaka kayo, paano naman itong mga empty columns na to? Don't worry, the software will just disregard these empty columns. Now, let's move to the data types. Data types describe how a value is stored. So, ito yung mga list of data types offered by MySQL. When you say string data type, this is good for storing names, descriptions, or things, addresses, and a lot more. Numeric data type naman are for integers, decimals, which are good for storing prices, age, or quantities of things. While date, date time, and timestamp data types are good for data that are time and date related. Marami pang iba't ibang klase ng data types at depende din ang terms nila sa software na ginagamit mo. 
You can also click this button here if you want to view documentation of the data types from the MySQL website. So now you have an idea what data types are, let's continue creating our table. For category ID, let's choose int or integer, it's like 1, 2, 3 onwards, with length of 11. This means that the maximum digit this column can hold is 11. For category column, let's use varchar with the size of 255. This means that this column can take in 255 maximum characters as its data, whether it may contain numbers, letters, or symbols. For category ID, enable or check the AI option or auto increment, which means every time I lalagay kay na data category ID column, ay automatic na magkakaroon ng data starting from 1. Makikita natin yan in action pag nag-insert na tayo ng data sa table natin maya, maya Once we enable the AI option or auto-increment option, this add index window will appear suggesting that we will convert the column or field as the primary key, which is in this case is the um, category ID. We will have another video dedicated for the primary key topic, so for now, just click on the go button. Now, we're done with our first table, so click on the save button. Click on the database we've created, and as you can see, ito yung table na ginawa natin. And as you can see, you also have these other options or actions that you can do to your table. Structure is for changing the table structure, while search is for searching data, insert for inserting data, and empty is for deleting all the data in your table while drop is to delete the table itself. Now, let's add another table. So click here, and then name the table users. Then type all these column names. Now, add three more columns. Then apply these data types for each column. On user ID, apply auto increment, and once done, click on the save button. So ito yung structure ng user stable natin. Here, you can edit columns. Now, let's add one more column to this table. Dito, you can customize where you want to insert the new column, which is in this case, we just wanted it after the email column. So select on it and then click on the go button. Then type user image as the column name and data type as text. For this kind of data type, no need to specify the length. So just click on the save button. To check out the newly added column, click on the structure tab. Now click on your database again and as you can see, we now have two tables, category and users. So, paano naman pag gusto nating palitan ng pangalan yung table natin? So, say we wanted to rename the users table, click on it, and then click on the operations tab. On the rename table 2, type your desired table name, which is in our case, we'll name it user account. And then, click on the go button. So, ganyan lang kadali ang pag-rename ng table sa database nyo. Paano naman pag gusto natin i-update or i-change yung column sa loob ng table natin? So now, click on the change link in the user image column and change the type into var car with length of 255 and then click on the save button. You can also check the box beside user image column 
and then click the change option down here. It still works the same. Or if you wanted to edit multiple columns at the same time, you can select the columns and then click on the change or choose any action you want. So, ganyan lang din po kadali ang mag-change ng column sa loob ng table niya. Ngayon, matutunan nyo naman paano mag-insert ng data sa table. So, ngayon, let's insert data into our category table. So, click on it and then click on the insert tab. And then add this data. Notice na hindi ako naglagay ng data sa category ID fields. Kasi, we set this as auto increment. So, ang MySQL na ang bahala mag-assign ng data, which is in this case, the data will start at 1 and then increment by 1 for the next entry. Then, pagtapos na, click on the Go button. This text here is equivalent SQL query of what we just did. You'll learn this sa mga future topics natin. Now, click on the Browse tab to see the data we just inserted. Notice the data in Category ID column. Ito yung sabi ko kanina ng software na bahala maglagay ng data. Now, let's insert more data. So, click on the Insert tab again. And as you can see, sa baba, may option na Continue Insertion with the number of rows. This is applicable kapag, for example, may five sets of data na dapat ma-insert all at once. And by default, dalawa lang ang display. So, you will specify the number of rows here na gusto mong ma-display. So, let's make it four. Then add this data. So you can also change this option here. You can also change this option here to insert another new row if you opt to insert more data after clicking the Go button. Now click on the Browse tab and as you can see, these are the categories we just inserted. Now click on the user account table and go to the structure tab. Then let's add another column after full name. So at the bottom, select after full name option and then click on the go button. And then type gender for the column name and enum for the type. Then click on this edit enum or set values and then type male, female. and then click on the Go button. Then click on Save. This again is an SQL syntax for updating a table. Again, we'll have this topic in our future videos. For now, click on the Insert tab, then check the Gender column with an enum type. You now have list of choices for possible data. So the data type enum is a string object whose value is defined during the column creation. Now, add this data. As you can see, for the password, it's not hidden or encrypted. That's okay for now. Hayaan na lang muna natin kasi meron tayong dedicated video for that. So after inserting the data, click on Browse and check out the newly inserted data. User image is blank. As of now. So ngayon, since natutunan nyo na paano gumawa ng table, you will have assignment. So create a table named order with this structure. So that is how you insert data into your table. Thank you all for watching and have a good day. Hello po sa lahat. Ngayon, let's add another table called items. So start your MySQL on Apache, and then open any browser. Now type localhost, and then click on PHP My Admin menu. Next, select your database, the grocery store underscore DB database, and as you can see, we have two tables already. So add new one. Click on the new button here. Again, our table name is items, so let's type it here. Then type this for the column names. The data in this category ID column will come from the table category from this column here. 
This is called foreign key. Don't worry, as we progress in our lessons, matutunan nyo rin yan. For now, ang kailangan nyo muna malaman is that this column is foreign key. Yung data for that column comes from the table where it's originated. Then, item for the third and price for the fourth column name. Then we need to add one more column, so click on the go button here. Then type description as the column name. Now, for the type, item ID is int with size 11, auto increment, and primary key. Category ID is also int with size 11. Item column is var car with size of 255. Price will be decimal 10, 2. Lastly, description is var car with length of 255. Once done, click on the save button. Here, we use decimal with parameters of 10 and 2, since price could be with centavo. Decimal dapat ang data type natin dito. 10, 2 means whole number is maximum of 10 digit and 2 digit after the decimal point. For example, 10.25 or 5000.99. Ngayon naman, gawin natin ang assignment from the previous lesson. Ginawa niyo ba? If not, then let's do it together. So let's add another table and name it orders. And then type these columns. First three columns will be int with 11 as the length, while the last column is date time, which obviously will accept date and time as the data. Make order ID auto increment and primary key, and then click on the save button. Ngayon, alamin naman natin ano-ano ang mga parts ng dashboard natin at kung para saan ang mga to. So, click on the Home button, then click on the Database tab. So, these are the list of database we have in our server. This is where we add database just like what we just did from the previous topics. So, next tab, SQL tab. This is where you can type your own SQL query whether it may be insertion, update, deletion, or even searching data. Next is Status tab, which is where you can find information regarding the MySQL server since the last restart. So User Accounts naman, this is where you can find all the accounts created. This is to prevent other users from accessing your database, if they're not authorized. By default, these are the list of users we have. So, mga next topics, we will create our own user account for our database. Export tab is used if you want to back up your database. You also have the option of choosing the file format you want to download. The import tab is the opposite of the previous one. This will let you import an external file, which also supports different file formats. Next tab is car set, which lists all the collation and its descriptions. Engines tab, open a list with all the engines supported by MySQL. Default is MyASAM or MyISAM, but what we are using is InnoDB since we will make use of foreign keys. So now click on the category table in your database. By default, the Browse tab is open, which shows list of data inside the table. The Structure tab is where you can manage your table structure. Maybe you want to edit a column name or add or delete column and a lot more. For the SQL tab, you will create and run your SQL queries here. Search tab is where you generate search queries for the chosen table, which also has a list of operations you can use. 
Insert tab is where you can insert records or data in your table. Nagamit na natin to from the previous lesson. Export tab is where you want to export your table or import if you want to import data or structure of your table. The Privilege tab is where you can create or edit existing privileges of users having access to your database. Operations tab is where you can rename your table, move it to another database, and a lot more. Triggers tab is where you can create trigger. We will have this topic in the future videos. Now let's go back to browse. This edit button here is used if you want to edit the data on a specific row or record. Copy is for copying the data and delete is for deleting. You can also use these buttons here if you want to edit, copy, or delete multiple rows at the same time. Export is the same with the export tab above. Now, click your database from the left panel, then these options here are the same with the tabs we discussed earlier, except empty and drop. Empty allows you to remove the data in your table, while drop will delete the whole table with all, all the data stored in it. So that's it. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. Hello po sa lahat. In this lesson, you will learn how to export and import your database. Let's say gusto mong i-backup yung database mo, or maybe gusto mong ilipat sa ibang computer, then you need to export it. So start your SAMP and then click on the database you want to backup. Then click on the export tab. The default format is SQL, but as you can see, marami pang ibang options. So you can just click on the go button. Once done, locate the file by choosing show in folder. Let's open the file para may idea kayo what it looks like. So right click on it and then choose open with and then wordpad. So these are the SQL syntax for your whole database. You will understand these codes in the future videos. So that's how easy it is to export a database. Paano naman if may copy ka na ng database mo at gusto mong ilipat sa ibang computer? So, yan ang tinatawag na import. For example purposes, I will delete my database para mapakita ko kung paano mag-import. So, I will click in the Home button here. Then, on the Database tab, I will select this database by clicking on this box here. Then, I will click on the Drop button. Confirmation message will appear, so I will just click on the OK button. The next thing to do is to create again database with the same name. Note that nag-delete lang ako ng database kasi hindi pwedeng may dalawa or more database ka sa server mo with the same name. Nag-delete lang ako para may pakita kung paano mag-import. Pero pag ang computer na gamit mo ay wala namang database na kaparehas ang pangalan, pwede kayong directly gumawa ng database. After creating the database, click on the Import tab. Then locate your SQL file, the one we backed up earlier. So click on this button. Once the file is located, make sure the format is SQL, and then click on the Go button. Congratulations, you have successfully imported your database. So that's how simply it is to export and import your database. Thank you, have a good day. Hello po sa lahat. Sa lesson natin ngayon, matutunan nyo kung ano ang primary key and foreign key. Pag sinabing primary key, this is used to ensure that no two records are the same. These keys are primarily used for relating tables of data sa loob ng database natin. Natutunan nyo sa mga previous lessons natin kung paano gumawa ng primary key, di ba? Usually, ang unang column sa table mo, yan yung primary key. And usually, naka-int yung data type. Pero hindi naman necessary. Pwede din namang text or ibang data type. Take note na ang primary key ay hindi pwedeng paulit-ulit ang data. Kaya most of the time, ginagawa itong auto-increment. Sample na pwedeng ma-primary key ay yung mga SSS number natin. 
TIN, pag-ibig, passport number, and more. This means na itong mga numbers na to ay unique at hindi pwedeng i-assign ng paulit-ulit sa mga members. So for example, kapag sinabi na ang passport number EC123456, malalaman agad na si Mrs. Juanita de la Cruz yan. Flashback tayo kung paano gumawa ng primary key sa table niya. Sana malinaw sa inyo ang concept ng primary key. Comment down below kung may mga tanong or clarifications kayo. Ngayon naman, let's talk about foreign keys. When you say foreign key, this is a pointer of reference from one table to another. Ang data sa foreign key dapat nag-exist na as primary key sa table kung saan siya nag-originate. Kasi again, reference lang naman ito. For example, sa table structure na to sa baba, ang category ID na column is the foreign key. The data from this column comes from the data sa category table, which is sa category ID column then. Confusing ba? To make it simple, isipin mo na lang na kapag ginamit mo yung primary key sa ibang table, foreign key ang tawag doon. Sa table na category, Si category ID column ang primary key, habang sa table item naman, si category ID column is foreign key. Ang data sa category ID column sa table ng item ay galing sa data ng category ID column sa table na category. In short, wala dapat data sa foreign key na hindi nag-exist as primary key. As you can see, sa category table, Ang data sa category ID column natin is until 6 lang. So dapat sa item table na category ID column, 1 to 6 lang din ang pwede. So paano marirestrict ang column na foreign key para walang maling data na mailagay? Ito yung process kung paano gawing foreign key ang isang column. So first, open up your database and click on the category table. As you can see, ito yung data natin, and we want this to relate this table sa items table using the category ID, which is the primary key. So click on items table, then go to the structure tab, and this is the category ID column na gusto natin gawing primary key. Note, make sure that the data types of both category ID from the items table and category ID from the category table are the same. In this case, they are both int with a length of 11. Now, click on the Relation View button here. Then let's leave the constraint name blank. Kasi pwede naman na na si MySQL na ang mag-generate niyan. Pwede mo ring lagyan if you want. Then dito sa On Delete and On Update, choose Cascade. Meaning neto, kung nag-delete ka ng record or row, of data sa table, for example sa category table, na may primary key na 5, lahat ng naka-foreign key sa table na category na ang data is 5, ay madedelete din. Same case for the update. Let's have an actual example for that later. Tapusin muna natin to. So dito, choose category ID since ito yung gusto natin gawing foreign key sa table na to. Next, Choose your database name, which is grocery store underscore db. Tapos dito sa column na to, piliin mo sa ang table galing ang data ni category ID. So, sa table kung saan primary key is category ID, which is sa category table. Then sa last, ano ang column name ng primary key? So, dapat category ID. Huwag kayo malito, but dalawa ang category ID? Itong category ID na to is ang foreign key na galing sa items table. And itong category ID na to is the primary key na galing naman sa category table. So tapos na ang setup natin. Click on the save button. This is the equivalent SQL query sa ginawa natin. Adding the foreign key constraint was successful. 
click on the structure tab and notice may sapat tayong key. This signifies that this column here is a foreign key for this table. So ngayon, tingnan natin ano ang advantage ng merong foreign key. Now go to insert tab. Notice that in our category column, we have drop down list of all the data from the category table. Remember that we made this column as foreign key. So this is one of the advantages when you set foreign key. Kasi ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na walang chance na makapag-input ka ng data na hindi nag-exist as primary key kasi may list na. You can use the ones up here or sa baba. Notice that this data are the data in the category table. Now, let's insert data. Type all this, then click on the Go button. This is the success message sa insertion na ginawa natin. Now go to Browse and notice the column category ID. Data on this foreign key column has a link and when you hover, you will see the data as a tooltip. To confirm, five fruits are here. So we can say that Item 1, which is Apple, is under the Fruits category and costs 20 pesos. So that's how Primary Key and Foreign Key works. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. Hello po sa lahat. Sa lesson na to, you will learn what relationship is. Sa previous topic, you learned about Primary Key and Foreign Key. Nung nag-apply na tayo ng Foreign Key sa isang table, Nag-establish na rin tayo ng relationship between two tables, items, and category. Because database relationship happens when one table uses a foreign key, that references the primary key of another table. There are three types of relationship. One-to-one, one-to-many, and many-to-many. -many. Ito yung sample ng one-to-many relationship. This relationship means na yung row of data ng isang table ay marerelate sa maraming rows ng ibang table. Just like sa example table natin, yung rows of data sa category table, which is represented by the primary key, ay ginamit natin sa table items ng maraming beses as foreign key. When describing this relationship, we can say that an item has one category, but the category has many items. Kung nalilito kayo, isipin nyo na lang na ang foreign key, most of the time, ay nasa many side. Kasi you can duplicate the foreign key. The next type of relationship is one-to-one. -one. But before that, let's change the structure of our user account table. Click on the user account table in your database and then go to the structure tab. Check the boxes for username and password. Then click on the drop button dito sa ibaba. We're doing this para gagawa tayo ng additional table para mas ma-normalize and ma-illustrate ko sa inyo ang one-to-one -one relationship. Click on the yes button to confirm the deletion. Then let's rename the table so we won't get confused later. Click on the operations tab and change the name into client. Then click on the Go button. Next is to change the column name of the primary key of this table. So click on the Change button and then change the name into Client ID. Once done, click on the Save button. To check our data in this table, click on the Browse button. As you can see, we have only one row of data. We'll add some more later. Next is to add another table. 
So click on the new button and then input this structure. Table name will be user account and the primary key is user ID. Then add two columns which we deleted from the client table earlier, username and password. Once done, click on the Save button. Ngayon naman, paano natin malalaman kung kaninong username at password to? So we need to create a foreign key of client ID into this table. To do this, click on the Structure tab and then add one column after User ID. Then type Client ID with int11 as a data type. Once done, Click on the Save button. To relate the two tables, User Account and Client, let's add a foreign key. Click on the Relation view and add this. Once done, let's insert data to this table. Since we only have one row of data in the client table, we only have one option here in the client ID column. Add this data and then click on the Go button. Again, this password is not encrypted. We will have that topic in the future videos. So now, we have updated our client table and added a new one called user account. Let's add data to our client table. Then let's add user account details for the newly added clients. Click on the user account table, but notice that this foreign key doesn't have tooltip, which means there's a problem with our foreign key here. Hopefully, yung sa inyo hindi ganto, pero just in case, para tayo, sundan nyo lang to. Click on the relation view button, and notice na nawala yung constraint ko. I don't know why, but anyway, if you fill up ko na lang ulit. Now we have tooltip. This signifies na okay yung foreign key natin sa column na to. Now, let's insert this data. Then click on the Go button. Go to Browse, and now we have three columns of data for this table. One-to-one -one relationship means na yung row sa isang table can only relate to one row to another table. For example, notice na yung primary key from the client table appears only once as a foreign key sa user accounts table. This means na 
one client can only have one user account and one user account belongs to one client only. When creating a diagram for our database, we have what we call crow's foot notation when describing the relationship. One is represented by this and many is represented by this. So if you have one-to-one -one relationship, diagram will be like this. And one-to-many relationship, it will look like this. Using MySQL, you can also view the relationship of your table. Just open your database and then click on the Designer tab and the arrange ko lang para mas makita nyo ng maigi. As you can see, we have five tables. For this software, one is represented by this and many is represented by this. So this is how you create relationship between your tables. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. Hello po sa lahat. Topic natin ngayon is kung paano ba mag-design ng database. When you have a database project, the first thing you need to do is analyze and design the structure of your database. But how? When you design, you have to bear in mind the term normalization. This is the process on designing your database to reduce redundancy and improve data integrity. Imagine if you have data like this. It's very unorganized. But if you will try to analyze, you can group this data into this. Designing database is crucial since you just don't group the related data together but you have to consider optimal storage and performance when data is used. Designing relational database is called normalization. When designing, you should look for places where data would repeat and what values would depend on one another, so you can group certain things together logically. For example, you have this data in your spreadsheet. You have the names, contact number, the product, description, category, the price, and the date. So this spreadsheet stores information of the clients and what products they bought, on what price, and on what date. Yes, you can design it like this, but as you grow your sales, this spreadsheet becomes more complicated to look at and maintain. If you analyze the data, it may look like this. You can group information per entity. So one for client, items, category, and sales. But this is still not normalized because you still have redundancy issue. And how will you identify who bought what or who paid that certain amount? If you apply normalization and relation in your database to reduce possible redundancy, it will look like this. You will relate your tables. For example, your items, there's a foreign key from category, so you will know that this item belongs to this category. So these two tables are related. And for the client, we relate it to the sales table. The same with the item. So in this table, you will know that, example, for the sale ID 1, the client ID 100 bought item ID of 50. So this table will show you that one row of information, you have the item that was bought by a certain client on a specific price and on a certain date. The problem is there will be redundancy issue on this part of your table since what if one client bought two or more items? So we will solve this redundancy here later on our next topic. As you have noticed, a table is an entity. Like in our example, it's the client, category, items, and the sales. So when you design your database structure, that you have to group together the related information and relate those information to another table just like what we just did in here. Gaya nga ng parati kong sinasabi sa mga sudyante ko, 
Iba't ibang database designer, iba't ibang structure din ng database ang ginagawa. Masasabi mo lang na tama ang design ng database mo kapag wala ng redundancy sa data. Sana malinaw po sa inyo ang topic na to. If you have questions and clarifications, comment it down below. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. Hello po sa lahat. Welcome po sa next topic natin, which is the select query. SQL or standard query language has its own keywords and syntax, just like any other languages. And the line of code in SQL is called a statement or query. Ang statement sa SQL ay parang sentence lang din sa English or Tagalog or any spoken language. It's just like asking questions sa database mo. Magsample tayo. Let's say gusto natin tanungin ang database natin. Sino-sino ang mga clients? Ang equivalent nito sa SQL query is select all from clients. This asterisk is read as all. Yung keyword na select at from are just few of the special keywords of SQL. Gagamit ka lang ng select keyword when you want to retrieve information sa database mo, whether it be from one table or more. Yung asterisk or star character, which means or reads as all. Gagamitin mo lang to kung gusto mong ma-retrieve lahat ng data sa isang table. And semicolon marks the end of your query. Para lang itong period sa sarili nating language. This will let the software know where the statement ends. Pero may mga software na gumagana pa rin ang query kahit walang semicolon sa dulo, gaya ng ginagamit natin. Now, let's execute this query into our database. So start up your MySQL, then select your database. You can click on the client table or directly click on the SQL tab. Then type the query. Select all from client. Then click on the go button. So this is the result set of our query. Notice that this is the same result when we click the Browse tab. Also notice this query here. It's the same with what we just typed. Take note na hindi case sensitive ang SQL, not like any other programming or scripting languages. Pero pa paano kung ayaw mong i-retrieve yung buong data sa table? For example, name lang ng clients ang gusto natin. So, papalitan natin ang asterisk ng name ng column na gusto mong i-retrieve. Our new query will look like this. Select full name from clients. As you can see, same pa rin ang format. Select keyword, then the column name, then the from keyword, and then the table name. Now, click on the go button and observe the result. What we have now is the list of clients' name. How about kung gusto mong mag-retrieve ng two or more columns on a specific table? Say for example, gusto natin i-retrieve ang full name, gender, and address ng lahat ng clients. So our query will look like this. Select full name, comma, gender, comma, address. From clients. As you can see, the format or syntax is the same. You use select keyword, then list of columns you want to retrieve, which is separated by comma. Then, the from keyword, and lastly, the table name. So, pag mas marami pa yung columns na gusto mong i-retrieve, you just have to separate the column names with the comma. Take note na kapag last column na, wala na dapat comma. Same with our address column in our query. So clear po ba? Ngayon, I will give you sit work. Gawa kayo ng select query that shows the list of items, price, and description from the table items. Tapos na po ba? Now, I will show you how to create this query. So, 
So yan po ang select query. If you have questions and clarifications, please comment it down below. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. Before we start with our lesson, I want you to update your database into this. So let me open my database and then my designer and arrange my tables. So as you can see, I have seven tables. I added and changed three more. So kindly update your database with these table names, columns, and data types. Once done, let's go to our lesson. Hello po sa lahat. Before we start our lesson, let's insert first few data in our table.
Now, let's say our boss wanted to know the list of items we have including its prices. So our query should look like this. Select items, comma, price from items. As you can see in the result, the column names in the table are also displayed as the column headers in the result. You can customize how your column headers in your result set by using the keyword S, which is known as the SQL alias. If you wanted to apply alias in your query, it will look like this. Select item as code available items closing code and comma from items. Then click on the go button and observe the result. As you can see, we now have different headers from the previous query. Take note that adding alias will only affect the columns of the result set and not the actual table. Also, you can apply alias to one or more columns in your query. But note this code here. If your alias has two or more words, you need to add double quote or single quote. So SQL will treat this as one string. If your alias is just one word, you don't have to put quotes. See what happens if I remove this quote here and run the query. You will have an error message like this. So again, quote is important if you want to add an alias with two or more words into your query. Do you understand? Now let's have a seat work. Make query for these questions and then apply alias. Magawa niyo ba? Now I will show you how to do it. So if you have questions and clarifications, please comment it down below. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. Hello po sa lahat. In this lesson, 
you will learn how to customize your select queries and be able to query selected rows only. This will be possible with the use of where keyword. The syntax for this is select column name from table name where condition. Condition is composed of column, operator, and value. To illustrate, Let's create query on clients who lives in Parniake City only. So our query will look like this. Select all from client where address is equal to code Parniake City. and then run your query by clicking this go button. Since we only have one client who lives in Parniake, we only have this as the result. The equal sign is called equality operator. We used it to check if address column has value of Parniake city. What will happen if we will just want Parniake? Edit your query into this. And click on the Go button. As you can see, there's no result. Since we don't have a match for the word Paranyake only, what we have is Paranyake City. This is because we use the equal sign, meaning exact match ang hahanapin. What if gusto natin i-retrieve ang data ng clients even if we just put the word Paranyake only? This time, we need to use the like keyword. When using this keyword, we need at least one wildcard. Pag sinabing wildcard, ito ay isang substitute character used when you don't know the rest of the text. In SQL, percent sign represents any number of characters. So our query will now look like select all from client where address like quote percentage paranyake percentage sign then closing quote. This means lahat ng address na may paranyake na word ay mare retrieve. Percent Paranyake Percent means kahit anong characters before and after the word Paranyake ay mare-retrieve. So let's click on the Go button. And we should see result now. So that's the difference between using the equality sign and like keyword in your rare condition. Moreover, when your condition looks like this, Paranyake Percentage, this means na lahat ng address na may paranyaki at the beginning ay mare-retrieve. Pero kapag ganito, percent paranyake means lahat ng address na may paranyaki sa dulo ay mare-retrieve. Kaya importante na alam mo kung saan ilalagay ang mga wildcards or the percent sign. Paano naman if gusto nyo i-retrieve lahat ng clients na hindi taga Paranyake? So you will need an operator called not equal, which is represented by exclamation equal sign or lesser than greater than sign, which reads as not equal to. So ang query natin ay select all from Client where address is not equal to code Paranyake City.
use this symbol. Now run your query and observe the result. As you can see, these two queries derive the same result. So same kung gusto mo ang list of names ng clients and their mobile numbers. Query will look like this. Select full name, comma, mobile, from, client, where, address is not equal to Paranaque City. Just specify the columns you need to retrieve. Marami pang ibang operators na pwede mong gamitin sa queries mo. You can check out this list here. Ngayon naman, sagutin natin ang tanong na to. What are the items that are below or equal to 20 pesos and with a category of 5? So, our query will look like this. Select all from items where price is less than or equal to 20. And category ID equal to 5. Run your query and then observe the result. Dito, gumamit tayo ng AND na keyword, which you can use para idugtong ang two or more conditions sa isang query. Pag AND keyword ang gamit, dapat both or all of the conditions should derive to true. So sa result set natin, this price here satisfies the first condition, while the second condition, category ID equals to 5, is also satisfied. Kaya ito yung result set natin. Ngayon naman, what if you want a list of items na price is higher than 10 or category ID is equal to 4? So our query will look like this. Select all from items where price is greater than 10 or category ID equal to 4. Then run your query. Here, the OR condition works the same with the AND, which you can use to chain or join conditions together. But in the AND keyword, all conditions should be true. While in OR, at least only one condition needs to be true to have a result set. Let's try one more time. Let's create query where we list the names of our clients that have client ID 1, 2, 10. So our query will look like this. Select full name from client. where client ID equal to 1 or client ID equal to 2 or client ID equal to 10. Now run the query. So this is our result set. As you can see, we only have two results since we don't have client ID of 10. So two conditions are satisfied. If you have clarifications, comment it down below. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. There are four main operations that you can perform in a database. Create, read, update, and delete. Or crude for short. Creating or adding data to your database, reading, which includes searching and filtering the result set, which we did in our previous topic. Then update or edit rows of data, and finally, remove or delete data. In the previous topic, you learned the read operation using the select query.
and filtering results set using the WHERE keyword. Now, you will learn the create part. This is the syntax on how you can add data to your table. Insert into table name, values, then the values. Before creating our own query, let's add more data to our category table using the Insert tab. Then click on the Go button. As you can see, we have insert query equivalent to what we just did. Syntax says insert into which are keywords, then the table name, which is in this case, is the category, and then the values keyword, and then the data you want to insert, separated by comma. Notice the quotes. This is used when you want to insert string of data. For integers or number data, you don't have to put quotes. As you can see, these tabs like insert and browse have an equivalent SQL syntax. Insert for insert tab and select for the browse tab. This is the convenience of using DBMS, which is in our case is MySQL. As I always say to my students, it's not enough that you know how to use a DBMS. It's also necessary for you to learn how SQL works. So let's create our insert query. Let's add another row of data. Type this. Insert into category values open parenthesis, 8, comma, quotation, condiments, quotation, closing parenthesis. Run the query and notice the added row of data into our table. Now, paano naman if we don't want to insert sa lahat ng columns ng table natin? For example, we don't want to specify the category ID since naka-auto-increment ang column na to. So our query will look like this. Insert into category open parenthesis category close parenthesis values open parenthesis quotation Shampoo, quotation, closing parenthesis. As you can see, pag hindi lahat ng columns ang lalagyan ng data, you just have to specify the column names you want to insert data into. What if maraming rows of data ang i-insert mo? Your query will look like this. Again. Category ID doesn't have to be specified since it's auto-increment already. So here, we will insert three rows of data at the same time. Make sure you separate each value with comma. So that's how easy it is to insert data into your table using the SQL query. For your sheet work, you add five more rows of data to items table. Comment your answers below. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day.
Before starting our lesson, I will show you the answer of our sit work from the previous topic. Updating simply means you want to change one or more rows of data into your table. Using the MySQL, you can update your data like this. That's how simple it is to update using this DBMS. The update query has syntax of update, table name, set, column name, equals, values, where, condition. This where condition is optional. Here, we have the update keyword followed by the table name you wish to update, then the set keyword, and then the column name you want to update the equal sign and then the new value. This where clause is optional. Kung gusto mong mag-update ng two or more columns at the same time, you just have to separate it by comma. Let's update the phone number of client ID 2. Update client Mobile is equal to five 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 five. Where client ID is equal to two. Then run your query and observe the result. We have successfully updated the phone number of client ID two.
What if we wanted to update the name, address, and contact number of client 3? So our query should look like this. Update client set full name comma address comma mobile where client ID equal to 3. Run your query and check out the result. Since this query involves three different columns, we use comma to separate each column. Now, ano mangyayari if tatanggalin natin yung where class? Let's try it. But first, I will create backup for the client table kasi ayokong itype sila ulit after this query. So click on the client's table, then go to the export tab, and then click on the go button. Now, let's try again the previous query without the where clause, and then run it. Let's check our table. What have you noticed in our table? Lahat ng rows ay affected. Why? Because we just simply created a query to update name, address, and mobile without specifying which row to change. So it changes all the rows since that's what's stated in the query. That is the main purpose of adding the WHERE clause into your update query. Of course, you can use the AND, OR, and all the operators you learned from the previous topics into your WHERE clause. Let's have an example. Update client set full name, comma, address, where client ID equal to 1 and mobile equal to then run your query. Sa result natin, zero rows ang affected kasi may client ID na nga tayong 1 pero wala naman tayong mobile na kagaya nito. Kasi ang sa table natin, we have this mobile number. Most importantly, end operator kasi gamit natin. Meaning dapat both conditions ay masatisfy or derives to true. So para ma-change natin ang data ng client ID 1, we will change the operator from AND to OR keyword. Or just change the BOMA number like this. When we run, we now have a result. So that's how simple it is to update data into your table. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. The last operation in CRUDE is the D part for delete which is to remove data in your table.
this operation uses the delete keyword. So the syntax for this is delete from then the table name where and condition. Again, this where condition is optional. The where clause here is the same with what you learned from the previous topic. Say we wanted to delete the category canned goods in our table category, which has category ID of 2. Our query will look like this. Delete from category where category ID is equal to 2. Or in case you don't know the category ID, you can also create your query like this. Delete from category where category is equal to canned goods. Then click on the go button. You will be prompted with a confirmation message to make sure that you really intend to delete the data. Since we are sure about this action, click on the OK button. Your category table will look like this. In the delete query, we use the equal sign operator, meaning exact match. What if we want to delete items that has price of lesser than 10 pesos? We expect that these two rows will be deleted after we execute our query. So let's type it now. Delete from items where price is less than 10. Then click on the Go button. And notice the result. As you can see in the WHERE clause, you can use the logical AND, OR, and conditional operators like less than, greater than, not equal, and more. Depending on the requirements, you can delete multiple rows at the same time based on the condition provided. The change is permanent, so make sure you're deleting exactly what you want to be removed. As you see it work, delete all the items under the category ID of 5. Nagawa niyo ba? Now, I will show you how. That's it for the delete query. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. SQL also has a keyword called order by, which is used if you want to order data retrieved from your database. For example, if you want to sort the items based on the price from highest to lowest or vice versa, or if you want a list of client names that are sorted alphabetically. This is the syntax for the order by keyword when used in a select query. Select column or columns from table name, order by column name. Let us try to create a query where we list all the names of our clients in ascending order. Select full name from client, order by full name. As you can see, our result set is sorted alphabetically. Again, this query only affects the result set and not the table itself. You can choose to order by ascending or descending. Default order is by ascending or ASC. The query we used earlier is by ascending even if we did not use the keyword explicitly. The previous query is the same or equivalent to this query. Select full name from client order by full name ascending ASC.
ASC keyword sorts a string alphabetically. If numbers naman, result will be from lowest to highest number. And if dates, it sorts from earliest to most recent date. Let us try to use this into a number or decimal column. Say, let's list all the items. Una sa list ay yung mga mura and patas na yung price. So, query natin will look like this. Select item, price, from items, order by price, ascending. Again, the keyword is optional kasi by default, kung walang ilalagay na ASC or DESC, ang gagamitin ng MySQL is ASC or ascending. So, the result is from the smallest to highest price. Try naman natin ang descending. Just edit your query and change this to descending. As you can see, result is from highest to smallest price. So that's how easy it is to use the order by keyword. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. Hello everyone. Before we start with our lesson, let's add rows first in our item table. Kasi last topic, nag-delete tayo. So, add these two rows of data. Database can store massive amounts of data, and often you don't want to retrieve all of these rows since it can affect the performance. Let's say may 1,000 rows of data sa table mo, and sa query mo, you only want maybe 5 rows or 100 from it. Dito na papasok ang limit keyword. Syntax for using this keyword is select column or columns from table name where condition limit, then the number of rows. This syntax is general. You can select the specific column or columns, add condition, and even use order by keyword. Let's create query in our items table. Currently, we have this data in our table. Let's say we need to create a query for this question. What are the top three expensive items in our database? So our query will look like this. Select item, comma, price, 
from items order by price descending or desc limit 3 now execute your query as you can see ang pinakamahal item natin is broccoli followed by the rice noodles and then spaghetti noodles so yan yung purpose ng limit literal na ililimit niya yung rows sa result set Let's try one more time. Again, let's create query for this question. What are the top five cheapest items in our database? So our query should be select item, comma, price from items, order by price, limit five. So this is our result. So that's how easy it is to use the keyword limit. Take note that this is applicable to any type of select query. If you have questions and clarifications, comment it down below. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. Hello everyone. In this topic, you will learn UK's function or uppercase function. SQL has a list of text functions which can transform the result, one of which is the UK's function, which converts the text into uppercase. For example, you want a list of client names in all uppercase letters. So your query will look like this. Select UK's open parenthesis full name close parenthesis from client. Run the query and check out the result. Let us put alias for the column header. So edit your query and add this. Now run again your query. As you can see, it's now more professional to look at. SQL also has LCase function. SQL also has LCase function, which makes the text all small letters. Let's edit the query and change it to LCase. Everything is the same except the function LCase. So run your query and notice the result set. We now have list of clients in small letter format. So that's how simple it is to use UK's and LK's function. You can combine both of these in one single query. Let's add some more columns here. Run your query. As you can see, it works perfectly. Notice that we use code in the alias even if it's just one word. So you can omit this if you want. It still works the same. If you have clarifications, comment it down below. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. Length function is used to count the numbers of characters a data has. So let's say for example, gusto nyo malaman yung length ng usernames ng mga clients nyo kasi gusto mo silang i-email para baguhin nila yung username nila and let them know na it should be at most 8 characters long. 
So your query should look like this. Select username, comma, length, open parenthesis, username, closing parenthesis, as quotation, username, length, quotation, from user account. Now, run this query. Oops, we have an error. Let me check. Yes, this table should be user account and not client. Let me change it and run the query again. So now we have this result. We have 9, 8, and 8. Since we only need the list of usernames that has more than 8 characters, we can add condition to our query. So edit your query into this. Select username, comma, length, open parenthesis, username, closing parenthesis, as, quotation, username length, quotation, from, username, where length, open parenthesis, username, closing parenthesis is greater than 8. Here, we just added the where condition. count function. This function also counts but not the characters of a data. Instead, it counts the rows in a table. For example, you want to know how many clients you have in your database, or how many items you have, or how many items costs more than 10 pesos. Let us try to count how many clients we have. So create the query like this. Select, count, open and close parentheses, all, as, number of clients, from client. And then run your query. As of now, we have three clients. So dito sa query na to, gumamit tayo ng count function, which counts the number of rows in the client table. Or paano naman if you want to know how many items you have under the noodles category. So our query will look like this. Select, count, open and close parenthesis, all, as, items in noodles category, from items, where, category ID is equal to 6. So, we have four items under this noodles category. So, that's how easy it is to use count and length function. If you have questions and clarifications, please comment it down below. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. Hello po sa lahat. Before we start our lesson, let's insert data to items table so we can use it to illustrate the topic. So open your database and insert all this data.
Now we have 12 items in our database. There is another function called distinct. Gagamitin mo lang tong function na to kung gusto mong mag-retrieve ng unique data sa table or tables mo. Let's say for example, gusto mong malaman ano-ano ang mga items na meron kayo sa database nyo. So the query will look like this. Select items from item. Now run your query. As you can see, may mga items na paulit-ulit. Kung ibibigay mo tong result na to sa boss mo, he won't be happy kasi paulit-ulit lang yung information. So to solve this, you need to use the distinct function. Edit your query into this. Select distinct open parenthesis items close parenthesis from item. Then run it. As you can see, duplicates are eliminated in the result. Now we have a list of items that are unique. Ngayon naman, let's learn about group by keyword. For example, tumong malaman ilang items meron sa isang category. We can create a query like this. Select category ID item from items order by category ID. As you can see, we have list of items per category. Per category. But the problem is, gusto natin malaman ilang items per category meron tayo. So we need the function count and the keyword group by. Edit your query into this. Select category ID, comma, count, open parenthesis, asterisk, closing parenthesis, from items, group by category ID. Now we have the number of items per category. So our query means we select the category ID column, then we group it, and then count how many rows that category ID appears. So our result set looks like this. We can also change the column header. So edit your query and add this alias. If you have questions and clarifications, comment it down below. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. Some function adds up the values of a specific column. Say for example, you want to know the total sales in the card table. But before we create our query, let's change first the data type of the column date into a date data type instead of date type. So our query will look like this. Select sum, open parenthesis, amount, closing parenthesis, from cart. Our query means, ito total niya ang column na amount. Now let's see the result. As you can see, we have a total of 90 pesos. What if you want to know sino-sino ang mga clients and magkano ang amount na pinamili nila? Now edit your query into this. Select sum amount from cart group by client ID. As you can see, we now have three rows in our result set. The problem is, di natin alam kanino tong values na to. Again, edit your query and add this, and add this client ID. As you can see, 
each client bought 30 pesos worth of items in our store. For now, ganto muna na naka-client ID. In the future lessons, instead na ID, name ng clients ang naka-display sa result. Kasi this one needs a query from two tables. Paano naman if you wanted to know how much sales you have per day? So we can edit our query into this. Select client ID, comma, sum, amount, from, cart, group by date. Or let's add date. So select date, comma, client ID, comma, sum, amount, from, cart, group by date. Now, this one looks good. Now, we know that on this day, this client purchased this item for this amount. Same goes here and here. The next function you will learn is min and max. As their name suggests, min will retrieve the minimum value and max will retrieve the maximum value. For example, we wanted to know the maximum price we have. So our query will look like this. Select max price from items. Now run the query. So 50 pesos ang pinamataas natin na presyo. Pwede din natin dagdagan ng alias to. Then run again. For the min function, same lang then, so let's change it to min. Ito naman ang pinakamura nating presyo, 1.5 pesos. Oops, let's change the alias for this one. Remember na we did this sa previous topics natin. So order, buy, and limit. But using this max and mean functions are way more easier. So that's all for this video. If you have questions and clarifications, comment it down below. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. Hello po sa lahat. Before we start with our lesson for this video, let's insert rows of data into our card table first. SQL has now and cur date functions. Date is important if it's, let's say you wanted a list of clients who signed up for today or for the past month or total sales for today and a lot more. You can even output the current date by using this query. Select now. So this is the date today. The result is the current date and time the query is executed. You can, of course, use an alias for the column header. Edit your query into this. But if you just want a current date, you can use the current date function. 
Let's edit the query into this. Select current date as current date. So this is the result. Now let's use this in a query. What if we wanted a list of sales for today? So our query should be select all from cart where date is equal to current date. As you can see, we have five sales for today. How about if we want total sales for today? Edit your query into this. Select sum amount from card where date is equal to card date. So we have 559 five, pesos total sales for today. That's how easy it is to use date functions in SQL. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day. SQL or SQL has four types of join, inner, outer, left, and right join. Ginagamit ang join pag gusto mong magcombine ng data from two or more tables sa query mo, based on the related column between those tables, which is yung primary and foreign keys. Let's say for example, gusto mong malaman sino-sino ang mga clients na bumili sa store mo. So kailangan natin ang card and client table. Sa previous topics, we learned how to do this by using select query. And it will look like this. Select all from cart. Then sa result, makikita natin ang client ID ng mga bumili. Malalaman lang natin ang mga pangalan nila if mag-hover tayo sa ID gaya nito. But what if gusto natin ma-display ang name ng client instead na ID lang? Or maybe ID and the client name na sabay? So this involves two tables, right? Dito na papasok ang inner join clause. Edit your query into this. Select client dot full name comma cart dot amount comma cart dot amount change comma cart dot discount comma cart dot date from client inner join cart where client dot client id is equal to cart dot client id so ito yung result natin sa query you notice na sa select clause natin we have format of table dot column name this is one way of accessing your columns, especially kasi dito, there are two tables involved sa isang query. So dito, we select the full name column of the client table, and ito mga to ay columns from the cart table. So if in case we need to create a query that involves three or more tables, same process pa rin. Table name, period or dot, then the column name you want to retrieve. Actually, pwede din tayo gumamit ng alias dito. Later, tatry natin yan. Then, from keyword, followed by inner join keyword, and then the second table, and then the where condition na nagre-relate sa dalawang table, which is the client ID na primary key sa client table and foreign key naman sa card table. Try ulit tayo ng iba pang query para mas maliwanagan pa kayo. Let's have a list of items with its price and category. Our query will look like this. Select category that category, comma items that item, 
comma items that price from category inner join items where category that category ID is equal to items that category ID then click on the go button see how simple it is let's try to apply alias on our table para mas malas ang confusion nyo sa paggawa ng query na to pero pag parati nyo na tong ginagamit masasanay din kayo sa format I've been using this when I have Android projects using my SQL as a database. Ganon ka useful ang inner join. To apply alias, edit your query into this. Select C. That category, comma I. That item, comma I. That price from category as C. Inner join items as I, where C. That category ID is equal to I. That category ID. So we just created an alias for the table, C for the category, and I for items. Then change the table names, category as C, then itong items as I. Also, don't forget to change in the WHERE class. So that's how simple it is to use inner join. If you have questions and clarifications, please comment it down below. Thank you all for watching. Have a good day.